Kia ora, good evening. Imagine not going to work as you know it, not having an office, employees, a physical address that you work from, no work colleagues to chat to or Christmas parties to plan, but you're still able to make a six-figure salary travelling the world, having experiences most of us can only dream of. That's the reality for an increasing number of Kiwi workers, as many of them move out of the office, away from the nine to five slog, taking little more than their laptops along for the ride. It's 10.30 in the morning at this Auckland cafe and while thousands of people around the world are just beginning their working day... That's me done for the day. Natalie Sisson has just finished hers. No, she wasn't working a night shift. I think I just love that I have so much freedom and creativity in what I do and then I get to choose exactly how I spend my time. When I wake up in the morning, what I want to do um, is basically what I get to do. Sisson began work just two hours ago, and guess what? She's likely to have made more money today than many people make in a week or even a month. She has no fixed desk, no physical office, and operates entirely from her laptop. Is it that easy? Is it that simple? I mean, what was the road to get there? It is simple if you choose and you're really clear about what you want your life to look like. Sisson is known online among her thousands of followers as the suitcase entrepreneur. She's a new breed of worker, a lifestyle designer or digital nomad, a location independent business owner who uses the internet to make her living. How different is this life from the one beforehand? Very, because uh, that was the corporate world, going into offices, the long commute, working for other people, getting caught up in the bureaucracy, um, and all the politics and just basically being under somebody else's thumb, which is so not me. So completely, completely different. And that took a while to get out of that corporate mentality. Woke up cold one Tuesday. The former corporate climber has been living and working like this, travelling with just a small suitcase for more than five years. Her online programs, which teach others how to create a successful business, has allowed her to travel to 69 countries. This year alone, she's worked from Auckland, Sydney, Toronto and Madrid, using internet cafes, shared spaces, beaches and B&Bs as her base. What do people think when you tell them what you do? Can people comprehend your lifestyle? So most people think it's crazy, then some people are confused, especially if they haven't run a business before and especially not if they're not used to working online because it's a whole new world out there. It's like the wild, wild west. Digital nomads as we call ourselves, you know, working with teams, virtual teams around the world, technology, online tools. It's pretty new for a lot of people. It might be new to many of us, but there's a growing number of people worldwide choosing to ditch the office and pack their bags and doing well out of it. Hi, I'm Catherine Newton. I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur. I make six figures in my business, travelling the globe, doing what I love. G'day, my name's Logan Elliott and I'm a digital nomad. I manage two companies which I get to run from beautiful locations just like this. From Takapuna to Toronto, huge advances in online technology are allowing people to live and work like this in every corner of the globe. I'm really excited about where this movement is going because I think it's about people being able to do the work that they're passionate about, to have flexibility in their lives and to have another level of security. For many of them, their Bible is the four-hour work week written by this man, Tim Ferriss. At just 27 years old, Ferris turned his fledgling company into a model of workplace efficiency, then turned those principles into a book. It sold almost one and a half million copies, spent four years on the New York Times bestseller list, and turned Ferris into a highly sought-after lifestyle guru. My intention, or I don't think, I know my intention was to really write this book for basically two close friends of mine who were going through problems that I had solved for myself. And one of them was in finance and felt trapped in his job, and the other had started his own company and also felt trapped in this monster he had to keep feeding. Uh, so I really wrote the book as if I had had two glasses of wine and was writing an email to close friends. <laughs> Is technology making it easier to live this kind of lifestyle? It's never been easier from a technological standpoint, 
because there are fewer barriers to entry, that means there's more noise out there, which means you have to be better at marketing than before. Have you ever had a nine to five Monday to Friday job, Logan? Uh, no, what, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever like one? Uh, not really. Freedom. Logan Elliott fell into the digital nomad lifestyle almost by accident. In the early days, I used to try and treat um, the companies that I run as more of a nine to five, where I sort of go in at a certain time and try not to check the emails after hours. But then I sort of found, hey, actually, that didn't really work. Um, the, the type of businesses that I run, um, I'm more doing them, they're, they're things I want to do, I'm excited about them, I'm passionate about them. So they don't really feel like work. So I have a pretty blurred line between what work and play is, really. He's a bit of a local expert in the field, with a master's in lifestyle entrepreneurship, among other things, and he guest lectures on the subject at Otago University. It's becoming a lot more common in all areas. You know, you, you hear about maybe it's harder to get jobs these days, jobs are less secure, so you're going, hey, I could actually start my own thing um, and have this flexibility and freedom to control my own destiny, and that's actually a safer option. Elliot has no fixed abode and minimal possessions. I think it's not just digital nomads that are challenging some of those things, but it's the, the new generations that are coming through. You're getting changing ownership models, for example, and, and seeing all this, this co-movement happening in terms of ride-sharing and, and house-sharing and these different movements. He spends his life travelling the world, blurring the lines between work and play, all the while running Kiwi-based creative entertainment business, Highly Flammable. Everything from being in Iceland, um, you know, exploring volcanoes and, and glaciers and interesting spots, and then being able to jump online and still keep up with the work that I'm doing um, has been quite good. You know, um, this sounds amazing. <laughs> Is this the good life? Well, I think it is. <laughs> I think it's a bit ridiculous, really. Typically, people fall into this lifestyle after a major life event, a redundancy, an urge to find something more satisfying than the sometimes mundaneness of the nine-to-five work life. Ferris says that's a social norm that needs to be challenged and redefined. No. If you have an employee, then you have to get very good at negotiating. And one of the things that, that I talk about in the 4-Hour Workweek is how to train your boss to value performance over presence. And there are ways to do that so that you can then negotiate remote work agreements and things like that. It's, very, it's actually very straightforward. I have no problem with hard work if it's applied to the right things. Uh, it's usually not applied to the right things. So the, 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 what I'm challenging is this obsession with wearing workaholism like a badge of honor. Like, I'm the first in and I'm the last out. I work harder than everyone else. And the question I would ask is, what are you working on? Hey, my name is Janik. And I'm Nalisha, and we're Digital Nomads. We're coming to you today from Thessaloniki, Greece. We've basically been traveling like this for over four years now. We've lived in over 25 different countries, 67 cities all around the world. We basically escaped the photocopy life and we're absolutely loving what we do. This Kiwi couple took Ferris's advice very seriously after reading his book eight years ago. We, we, we were basically in a grind in our own life where we were living a photocopy of the day before, we were working so intensely, and we weren't having a good quality of life, so we were just like, hey, we can build our business while we travel. <laughs> They've been living and working remotely on their online businesses now for two and a half years. They've rented apartments in 35 different cities and say the key to their success is making time for both work and play. Has Tim's method lived up to its hype? I think the four-hour work week, not so much. <laughs> we, we do um, work quite intensely when we work and then we love to take time off and really enjoy our time off. But the concepts of um, having a mobile business so that we can live anywhere and work anywhere, that really stuck it. Yeah. Yeah, I was back in Times Square again. The couple move on every two to six weeks, depending on work visas, chasing new countries, cultures and adventures. How have your dreams changed? Massively. When we actually started out um, in business, we 
basically wanted a, a big house by the sea. We wanted a fancy car in the driveway and make a lot of money. And yeah, along the way, we've really redefined what success means to us. And for us, it's freedom and lifestyle. There were three really big things that stuck out for me that I wanted to share with you so you can kind of see where where your business model needs to be going in some ways. And it was also redefining that. success, Catherine Newton. She didn't initially think this was a lifestyle possible for her as the mother of two children, but now shares her success and coaches others into making a living online. I was that person looking at the lifestyle entrepreneurs going, oh, that's ridiculous, oh, that's not possible, oh, they're just, you know, they're just cheapskates or they're, you know, they're skiving money off people or, you know, they're not making a decent living. And uh, and I guess this is where, you know, it's like the tables have turned, times have changed. We have so many vehicles at our fingertips now with social media. And there are so many ways for people to be able to earn an authentic, real and, um, you know, and very good income. Online sites like Nomads List help remote workers decide which cities are nomad friendly, rating cost, weather, air quality and fun among other things. Can everyone do this? Of course not. And anyone who writes a book and says it's for everyone is either completely delusional or lying to you. Uh, and so I have skeptics who say, well, what about the taxi driver? What about the bricklayer? And I say, maybe it's not for them. But if you happen to be one of the many, many, many hundreds of millions of people who do most of their work on a computer or on a phone, then this all applies. But does it apply to everyone? No. Can it apply to more people than you might expect? Yes. Do you work a four-hour work week yourself? I don't have to work at all if I don't want to. Um, and if, I mean, I'm in a very good position. Um, the objective, I should underscore, is to is not to be idle. I don't want millions of people watching paint dry or just rubbing cocoa butter on their stomachs all day. <laughs> uh, the objective is to control time so you can allocate it to what you want to do and what you find meaningful. All four of our Kiwi case studies in this program make good incomes and find other ways to give back. When you give people freedom and flexibility to do the work that they love doing, they're naturally inclined to start doing really interesting things that can have positive impacts on the world. Do you make a good living in this lifestyle, Logan? I think I live well um, in terms of I get to do the work that I'm passionate about. I get to travel and do the things I love. I don't think it's ever really been about the money that I make, to be honest. It never was, you know, and never will be. If I, if I wanted to earn mega bucks, I'd maybe go and do something different but I feel like there's a big trade-off in doing that. Up next, the US prosecutor who sent an innocent man to jail and has been haunted by it ever since. I mean, at the end of the day, beginning, end, middle, whatever you want to call it, I did something that was very, very bad.